Sometimes Quizmaker users are surprised to learn that you can actually have both graded questions and ungraded ones in the same quiz. And this is a neat situation where you might want to do that because we've got these three you know, separate question groups that we've created here. And what we want to do is give our learners a choice at the very beginning, before this first question group, where they can pick which group of questions they want to answer. And when they select that choice, we don't want to assign a point value to that. It's really just a mechanism that helps us know, you know which question group to take them to next. So what we're going to do is create one more question group here to contain that very first question or the learners decide which set of questions they complete. So we'll go ahead and click question group and the new question group gets inserted down here at the bottom and that's fine. We can move that in a second. I'm going to rename this group to something a little bit more intuitive. We'll double click here and call this intro choice and now we can add our question to it. So we're going to come up here and click survey question because on survey questions there is no score and that's real important for this example. We're going to use a pick one question that behaves just like a multiple choice question and then we can go ahead and click OK. Now when the question editor pops up this is where you can enter you know your question text and your choices. So down here is where we'll enter our options. We'll call this first one animals, the second one we'll call vegetables, and the third one we'll call minerals. And the box up here at the top is where we can type our question. So we'll just do something real fast here. What topic would you like to complete? Okay, so now once you've got your question text and your choices entered here, if you want to dress things up a little bit on your slide as far as the visual design, a really cool thing that you can do is click on slide view and that's going to open up a more visual editor that you can use to rearrange things or add things, make things look however you want. One thing I'd like to do though um, before we switch to slide view is I'm going to turn answer shuffling off. I'm going to set the shuffle option to none and what that does is when we switch to slide view um, it allows me to move these answer choices around to whatever place on my slide I want and when the learner views that slide those answer choices are going to stay right where I put them. They're not going to be shuffled into a different order. So let's go ahead and select all three of these with a shift click and then we'll kind of size them down a little bit so that they fit in more of a, um, we're going to put them in kind of a horizontal arrangement here. So we'll do minerals over here at the right, vegetables will go in the middle, and then animals will go right here. So again, you can play with this and make things look however you want. You can even add things to your slide if you want to. Like for example, I've got a few images here in my file viewer, and I can add them all at once by just uh, shift clicking here, and then we'll just drop them onto our slide. Move this out of the way. Then we can kind of move these into view here so that they look the way we want. Put the minerals over here. So you get the idea. You can play around with how these look. You can even do some formatting, like if I wanted to maybe make the picture look a certain way. I can select all the pictures, go to my format tab, and there's these options here for, you know, maybe I want this kind of Polaroid effect or whatever. And then I might want to also center these up so that they look a little bit better underneath each of my pictures. So anyway, this is a good start. This looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and just save and close out of here. So now our question group is currently at the bottom of our list, but we want to make that at the top. So I'm going to select that new question group that we just created and we're just going to move it right up to the top and now it's going to appear as the first question in the quiz. Alrighty, so we've got all of our questions set up into our groups and we've got this first question at the top where the learner picks the group that they want to go to and now all we need to do is set up our branching and the first place that we need to do that is right here in this initial question, that gateway question where the learner chooses one of the three groups. So we're going to open up that question and what we want to do is change the feedback selector up here at the top to by answer. And what that does is it allows Quizmaker to take the learner to a different place depending on which answer they choose. And you'll notice now that we've changed that feedback selector that now we're getting this feedback column here next to the answer choices. And if we wanted to, we could enter some text in these cells here and that text would appear in a pop-up message after the learner answers, but we really don't need to do that for this particular example. What we want to do instead is click on the More button because that's where we set up our branching. So I'm going to click on the More button for this first choice, the animal choice, and the branching options are going to show up right over here in the lower right corner. And by default, the learner is going to branch to the very next slide once they answer this question, but we're going to change that since we're working with the animal choice, what we want to do is branch them 
to the first question in the animals section. So we'll go ahead and select that and then hit OK. And then we'll do the same for the other choices. So for the vegetable selection, we're going to go to the um, branching options here and we're going to send them to the first question in the vegetables group and then the same for minerals. Branching options are here. We'll scroll down a little bit, choose the first question in the minerals group. And you'll notice once I do that, I'm, I'm getting this little icon here and that's just saying that I have set up branching for those options. So it's kind of nice that you can see that visually that you've already taken care of those. So that's all that you need to do for that first question. We'll go ahead and save and close. And the other place that we need to pay attention to as far as branching is at the end of the question groups. And here's why. Right now, if I answer this first question and I jump to a section you know, that matches my choice, for example, if I pick the vegetables section, I would jump down here to the vegetables group, um, which in this case would allow me to answer those questions. But what happens when I get to the end of that group of questions? Well, by default, once I answer the final question in that group, I would go right on to the next question in my question list, which in this case would be you know, actually the beginning of the third group, which we don't want. What we do want is at the end of the group, we want to take them to the end of the quiz so that they can finish. So what we're going to do is open up this final question here in the vegetables group, and we're going to set up the branching behavior so that they jump over any remaining questions that they don't need to answer. So down here at the bottom of the question editor, again, we're going to see these more buttons. And you can actually, on a graded question, you can set up different branching behavior based on whether the learner you know, gets the question right or wrong. But we don't really need to do that. We want to send them to the end regardless of what they pick. So we're going to click on the more button here for the correct answer. Here's our branching options. And this time we're going to choose finish quiz and then click OK. And then we're going to do the same thing for the incorrect answer. Branching options are here and we want to say finish quiz. And then we're good to go for that one. We're going to do the same thing on the end of the animals group. So we're going to select the final question in that group. Down here at the bottom, we'll click More. There's our branching options. We'll say Finish Quiz for the correct answer and Finish Quiz for the incorrect answer. So that one is all set. And for this last group down here, we could do the same thing, but we really don't need to worry about this one because the default behavior is fine. Since this is the last question in our whole question list, what's going to happen is that they'll actually just go on to finish the quiz by default. Since there's no more questions after this one, they would just be done after they complete this answer. So um, that one will behave just the way that we want it to. So that's all that we need to do to make sure that that branching behavior works the way we need it to in this quiz.